Greetings, Earth. Welcome to the Nostalgia Mass. Hello and welcome. As always, I'm your host, Kat. And today, here with me, we have Alex. Hi. And Nick. Yo. Today we have a special episode for you. In the world of independent and short films, you often find some good ones with great stories. But every so often, you find that one in a million film which really blows your mind. Those of you who have been following us for some time now will know that I post reviews and links to some of these films. And among them is the review I wrote for a one in a million independent short film called The Looking Planet, which has won more than 50 awards at film festivals worldwide. Well, today... We have the writer, director, and producer of The Looking Planet, Eric Lai Anderson. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much. When you created this, did you think that it would even go that far, let alone winning more than 50 awards at these film festivals? Well, there's a strange mix of uh, expectation. On one hand, you think it's going to change the world. And then the other part of you is like, nobody in the world is ever going to see this movie. So (laughs) you're kind of torn between these two emotional states. Of course, you're hoping for one and and expecting the other. Yeah. It was wonderful what happened with the... I will admit that I was a little bit spoiled with my previous film because that did really well, too. And I I was expecting to get in on dance again. And what then happened with this film, this film was much in the genre of sci-fi and kind of included in the the top tier film festivals, but it still did fantastic. And it won more awards than any film I've ever made. So I I couldn't have been happier with how it all turned out. And that previous film is Horses on Mars, as I recall. Yes. Yeah. What's the genesis for The Looking Planet? What was the idea that popped into your head that turned into this, this really awesome film? That's a complicated question to answer because it comes from a lot of different things. It kind of gelled at all one. I mean, the primary thing was at the time I wrote the film, I was stuck in a job that I hated, even though it was a pretty cool job. For me, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. And I wanted to make movies, and I wasn't doing that. Stories about a character who wants to be creative and is stuck in a, a job where he's not allowed to do. The primary source of my pain that led to the, the story. The other thing is, like, I've always been fascinated with the moon and the relationship between the Earth and the moon since I was a kid. I think I was doing puppet shows for my parents about the moon landing when I I was seven years old. So it's kind of, it's an old story in my head. I think it's been around for a long time. I wanted to do something that expressed my my fascination with the fact that we landed on the moon and, and that we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the moon, I think is extraordinary, our existence. So that's really two things that kind of came together. Very cool. I know when I was watching it, there's a lot of little nods to different things in the film, other other science fiction and other science fiction writers, one in particular, Stanley Kubrick, I noticed. Oh, of course, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, phenomenal. And of course, that was deliberate on your part. Well, I, one of the things that I was curious about is the language. Oh, yeah, that was actually the coolest part of producing the movie. For a long time, making the movie, I had no idea how I was going to do the language. I was going ahead with production and doing all this animation, but not, you know, saving the lip sync until I figured out this problem. Mm -hmm. In the temp track, I was using foreign language snippets from different foreign language movies. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to work pretty good to get an idea of what I wanted, but... I had no idea how I was actually going to pull it off. I mean, I started with the most abstract idea was to combine animal sounds with computer sounds. And we did some experimentation and it just, it's cute for a while. But if you have too much dialogue, which this film in the beginning has too much dialogue for it to sustain the cute ability like got sour really fast. Right. And so I gave up on that and decided we needed a real language I didn't want to do a conlang, which is a um, constructed language that's not real. In general, first of all, it takes a lot of effort. I know Avatar did that, and they did it really well. I had the resources to pull it off. So it just so happened, my wife, who is also a producer, she had a friend who was down in Brazil who was recording the, the native language down there from pre-Columbian times, uh, Native American languages down there, for 
preservation purpose. They already had this sound recording equipment and everything and access to the, the villagers. And so we sent a proposal to them about how to do this and if we could. And they said, yeah, we gave them some money and they were on board. Natives actually were excited about it and they helped us translate the original script into their language. They did readings for us. We basically kind of put it all together from, from those reads way better than I ever expected it to. So it was pretty amazing that it all came together so well. You had to have recordings of the dialogue spoken by native speakers so that then your actors could then duplicate the sounds. Right. That's the, the cast had to listen to those recordings and then kind of just repeat the dialogue with an emotional performance, which the, the native speakers, they're not actors. And right. It was all very readings, except the main character, Lufo, is actually a native speaker. And he did so well, we didn't have to replace him. It was, although I direct him and coach him further than his first reading, it, mm -hmm. it just, he was exactly the voice I was looking for. And a an, natural actor. Yes, because he was 10 yeah. years old and he'd never acted in anything. <laughs> and I could That's tell the recordings because, you know, I could hear all the in between dialogue is happening and I'm directing through another person who's doing the recording and, and she's trying to get him to do things the way I want them to be done. And he's, I can sense his frustration is like, I just want to go play. Why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So bad for him. But after it was all said and done, he was happy to be in the movie. Yeah. That's really cool. 50 awards, over 50 of them worldwide film festivals. That just blows my mind. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I know. Well, it's just great to even get into 50 film festivals to win that many awards. Yeah, it's um, I know. You think, certainly not something I expected. Right? So. Got the, the short film, which is like 16 and a half minutes long. So where do you go from here? I'm at a place in my life where it's becoming more difficult to make short films. Huh? To continue films, I either have to be getting paid to do it or not do it at all. And mm -hmm. there's no money in short films, or at least I haven't figured out how to do it yet. Very difficult to make money on a film like The Looking Planet, which is 16 and a half minutes of pure CG that is very time consuming to produce. I had to get a lot of people to volunteer their time for free in order to do it for a lower budget than would be normal. Normally that stuff is very expensive. So, But what happens is when you're on low budget, things take longer. So you're trading money for time and time is getting more and more precious right now for me because i have two three-year-olds oh so, my goodness <laughs> doing another film like the looking planet is going to be exceedingly difficult so i've been developing films for since i got out of film school so i'm ready to do one it's just trying to find the right place to do one and studio that wants to do something that i'm interested in so that's what i'm working on now is pitching stories around the studio system to see if anything will happen with those ideas. And I definitely hope it does, because if anybody watches The Looking Planet or any of the other short films that you've done, you're a great storyteller. Got oh, some well, really thanks. cool ideas. I would love to see something from that universe of The Looking Planet that created actually become a feature film. That, I think, would be really cool. Yeah, me too. Actually, I did write a story for a feature based on the characters in the world of The Looking Planet. Mm -hmm. uh, I started on it prior to finishing the short. I finished it about six months after I finished the short. I found the story finally. It was kind of a complicated story to try to tell. but So it took me a little bit longer than normal. But once I figured it out, I, I was pretty excited. I've been working on artwork for it for the past several months. I've got a few other artists helping me i'm writing the script right now try to make that movie do you guys have any uh thoughts or questions you want to ask um i've actually got one okay um, go for it <laughs> i was watching the looking the other day and looking planet uh looking planet sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> nerves. Uh, i like that because actually that was kind of where the title comes from it was the <laughs> am i right in thinking considering these beings are as old because of the jetpacks i looked at them and i just all of a sudden like at the end of the film when they say one of my favorite lines we better not screw up the neck verse mm -hmm. um, they kind of look like angels to me like yeah. just the whole wings was yeah. intentional well normally i don't like to answer questions like that because i like I, to leave that up to interpretation 
But I mean, yeah, there is some intention there. I will say that. Mm-hmm. Like that just like blew my mind because I watched the whole thing. I was just looking at it, and it's so visually stunning. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. That means a lot. You know, one of my heroes in sci-fi storytelling is Arthur C. Clarke, which is not a big stretch for anybody to say, obviously. But right. what I love about his work is he he integrates mythologies from our past and finds a way to science fictionize them. To, to make them modern in a way that we can understand them in a whole new way, kind of turns everything on its ear. That's definitely a part of my hope. That's what I'm hoping to do with my work. Yeah. The end effect, when you can mesh mythology with science fiction and give it just a whole new life like that is just brilliant. And you did that with The Looking Planet, I think. Wow, it thanks. Just, it, it looks great, and the story is just like, wow. And just the ideas within that story, it, just, it makes you think, and you go, what if? <laughs> you know? And any story, really, is the answer to that question, those two words, what if. Yeah. Well, I love movies that after a couple of days after I've seen it, I'm still thinking about it. Like, there's something going on in my brain, and I'm trying to sort through what some unanswered questions that the movie has brought up. I love those kind of movies. Those are my favorite kind of movies. Those are the kind of movies I want to make. Thinking person's movie kind of thing. That it's but visually it is- stunning, it's beautifully done, and it makes you think all, in, all at the same time. Well, thank you. I Certainly that's not a selling point in trying to get the feature made, but uh, <laughs> hopefully we can have some of that in the feature as well. Yeah. It's definitely a story worth telling. I'm honestly going to say, like, this has got me still thinking. Even now, I'm literally still thinking about it. It's such a good story. And I, Mm -hmm. honest to God, it's one of my favorite shorts now. (laughs) That's awesome. I've been going through a number of different short films and poking at them and seeing what's out there. As far as what's being presented at, at film festivals and, and what I can find online, do like little short reviews of them and stuff and, and post them on the Nostalgiaverse page. I find a lot of good ones. I do. Yeah. I do find, actually find a lot of good ones. And then I run into ones like this and it's like, you guys got to see this. <laughs> you really got to see this. I want to see more of it. I do want to see more of like Milking Planet is see more of it, like another universe, like okay, and more focus on the child, uh, the child in Lufo. Yeah, there's a large story arc for the the main character Lufo in the feature version, and it's the whole movie's about the Big Bang, which wasn't supposed to happen. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> well, it happened. It did happen. There are consequences. Yeah. Yeah, there would be. But I'm also hoping to pull people in who don't like science at all, who think it's a waste of time or think math is some horrible thing that must be avoided under all circumstances, to try to bring together the the emotional side of the humanity with wh- the, why science is important. That's sort of mm-hmm. my underlying philosophy about trying to tell a science fiction story in the first place, is to try to bring this to people who don't normally even want to even watch sci-fi because they hate science. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Not that a lot of sci-fi doesn't even have science in it. It's just, uh, but definitely want to have that component. The realism of science and math and and its power to shape our future. And if you look at science fiction, the last hundred years of science fiction, going all the way back to Jules Verne, where he came up with the concept of submarines and diving suits. Yeah. We have those. We've had those for decades. You look at things like Star Trek, cell phone, personal laptop computers and tablets and touchpads and all of the technology that we've been developing because of science fiction. Because science fiction is literally that, what if this on a story level? And then on a scientific level, they're going, well, what if it was real? Can we actually do that? Question: Do you have like anything to storyboard or story for the sequel to Looking Planet? Uh, yeah. So the the feature we're actually working on the artwork for the concept right now, concept art. And once I'm finished with the script, which will be very soon, we'll start storyboarding. And actually, I've already kind of done a lot of thumbnail storyboard sketches for main sequences. And I know you have this problem with when you're a writer, but you're also very visual. You're 
you're seeing the scenes in your head, just writing it out isn't good enough. So you have to start drawing. Mm -hmm. So part of that is, is already started. I've been doing those drawings. I'm not the greatest storyboard artist. So I've got some help with that. So I'll get some guys to do that, help me get it storyboarded. But yeah, that would be the next step after we kind of finish the concept art and get the script written and we'd storyboard it. And then we'd cut the storyboard together with a uh, temporary and then we'd have a rough idea of what the movie's actually going to be. Yeah, that'll be extremely helpful for getting it, getting a studio to pick it up and say, okay, yeah, we're going to do this. And I really hope you do, because this is one of those stories that, oh, I, I so want this. <laughs> <laughs> It's, well, good, it, good. It I'm is glad really to, that awesome. Glad to hear that because I'm so excited to sing this at the studios. I'm going to start next month. Hopefully, we'll get somebody to take a chance on something original and it's not got superheroes in it. Right? I'm going to have to say this. I'm a big comic book nerd, but this is the first property that I like that isn't related to superheroes or any sort of other thing. It's own unique thing which has enticed me, so I'm hoping that it'll entice someone. Me yeah. too. Glad to hear that too. But in a way, I think these characters can be like superheroes in the sense that they do have supernatural powers. They control gravity and they control electromagnetism. They have the ability to shape these things like mankind can shape steel and plastic. So there is a lot of potential there to be parallel with what you can maybe see in a comic book story. As Nick was saying, I think it's one of those things that even though it's not your, your traditional superhero type story, it has certain elements that will kind of bring those superhero comic book fans into the story and go, ooh, this is actually really cool. And I think that's, it's got those elements, like you said. It'd be a good transition. I think so. Well, I'm hoping that you're right about that. I think you are. Well, I mean, one thing that really encouraged me about that is film did win best animated film in the independent film festival at comic-con last year mm -hmm. so that gave me some confidence that yeah probably this, this would appeal to that crowd i think if we got the word out that this yeah was there. i mean i could actually see this done as a comic book story can't get it funded as a film i might go that direction with it. i'd love to see it as a film but i could definitely see a comic book version of this that would just really jump off the page and people be like, why is this not a movie? <laughs> it's like, well. We tried. Yeah. Maybe you can try again. <laughs> yeah. For whatever happens, somehow or I got to get the story out. Yeah. Outside of just oh, yeah. my head because it's something I would like to share. Yeah. And being a writer myself, I know that when you've got a story knocking on the inside of your brain going, hello. <laughs> yeah. you gotta write it <laughs> there's no two ways about it it has to be written it has to get out there i well understand that one completely yeah. oh man to all our listeners there if you have not seen the looking planet what are you waiting for you need to like track this down and see it seriously and we will make sure that there are links so that you can see not only my review of it but also links to the website where it's at and there's some little behind the scenes stuff involved as well on the website that you guys could check out and read about the story and stuff and actually see the film it's definitely worth your time and consideration to be sure thank you so much again for talking to us my pleasure great fun to talk to you and to everyone else thank you for listening and good night good night night